As summer draws to a close and autumn approaches, it becomes a very eventful time for the natural world. And for deer, it's the most active and possibly most important part of the year, the rut. It's early morning. A thick fog covers Richmond Park. Bellowing roars echo through the surroundings. The deer are already awake. As the fog clears, the sun casts beautiful, vibrant colours across the city sky. Young deer explore and play as the sun's warmth begins to hit the forest, creating a scene that would not be out of place in a fairy tale. They are all grazing. The stags need this extra energy. They have a tough day ahead. The mist clears and the day continues to warm. The stags begin to search for groups of females and perform certain behaviours to draw them in and make themselves more noticeable. Here, he's not just showing us his killer smile. This action is known as flemining, where the deer curl back their upper lip and draw in air over an organ called the Jacobson's organ to enhance the detection of female pheromones. Olfactory signals are extremely important in deer, especially in this time of year. It's probably their primary sense, as males can use odour to determine whether females are in estrus. And behind me, a lot of the deer are wallowing in a ditch, and they do this to accentuate their smell, so other deer can pick up their scent from further away. Deer produce scents using both urine and scent glands, which are found on many parts of their body from feet and hind legs to in front of their eyes and forehead. These scent glands produce a liquid or waxy substance filled with scent molecules. They can then rub against trees, shrubs, and pretty much anything they find. This can sometimes lead to stags walking around with rather interesting headwear, which may also deter rival males as it makes their antlers look larger. When using urine, males may urinate on body parts, including their necks and legs, to soak hairs with their scent, which they can then spread by rubbing on various objects. Even though it works for them, personally I wouldn't try it at home. I think this may attract the wrong kind of people. When spreading their scent, they may wander too close to other males' harems, which some males may have an issue with. However, this young stag has worked out a simple solution for this. He hides. Occasionally, the smaller males have other plans, which can be a much bigger annoyance to males holding harems. You can see some of the smaller subordinate males hanging around the dominant male's harem. These are termed sneaky or satellite males. They have a less admirable mating technique where they'll try and sneak a mating with one of the females in the dominant male's harem without his knowledge. They do this in an attempt to gain some mating success if they think there is no chance of dethroning the larger dominant male. I'm pretty sure there are some humans who get their mating techniques from deer, especially in all crops of meat. For this reason, the dominant males must always keep vigilant, patrolling their harems, roaring and grunting to assert their dominance, and ensure others keep their distance. This conflict between smaller and larger males can usually be settled visually. If the size difference is obvious, then there is no point wasting the energy and potentially getting hurt. Despite the drama, some deer still want 
all the attention. To avoid the risk of fighting, their roaring is stage one of the challenge. This noise can get quite annoying for some of the other park residents. Generally, larger stacks can roar louder, and this can deter smaller stacks from challenging. However, if this doesn't work, or if they're quite evenly matched, then they'll resort to a parallel walk where they'll weigh up the opposition to see if they have a chance fighting them. If neither backs down at this point, then there's only one thing left to do. Suddenly, the dominant male pulls out from the fight. He has bigger problems. His harem is under threat by a rival group of males, while the challenger is left a little confused. Not knowing what to do, the dominant male loses his nerve and darts off into the bushes, leaving his harem under the control of a new male. This stag, however, has yet to impress the females. But all of a sudden, the dominant stag has returned with confidence and he's not alone. He's brought a sidekick. The original challenger has seen enough. With a roar and a look of determination, he manages to claim back his harem and escort them off into the woodland. As the rain begins, it becomes more dangerous to fight, and the satellite males know this. With larger males less likely to resort to a fight, smaller ones try their luck, roaring and approaching the harem. But this male is not having any of it. Sometimes all it takes is one good roar and the females come running. He has secured his harem for now. As the day clears up and draws to a close, many deer begin to settle down. However, stags holding harems can't relax too much. They must remain vigilant. As the sun sets, some stags play fight, while others put their heads down. Although their day is not over, deer remain active throughout the night and so does their battle for females and dominance. This is the struggle that the male red deer have to face every year in order to pass on their genes to the next generation. Like this stag, keenly awaiting his time, which is soon to come. <laughs> 